Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. In this update, we're gonna be talking about this ice storm turning out to be worse than expected. So let's take a look at the latest update and you can see this area in pink. This is your winter storm warning that has been expanded and extended all the way into Thursday morning now. Covers portions of Southern Oklahoma all the way into North Texas, encompasses all the way into West Texas, Central Texas, all the way into Austin, and even San Antonio now has that winter storm warning. We've got ice storm warnings in portions of Arkansas. Winter weather advisories extend all the way through Western and Central Tennessee, going up to Kentucky, and now includes West Virginia. It's all culprit of this trough that's out here off the West Coast. You can see freeze watches for them. That's the trigger mechanism that's causing all the lift that's going to be in place really for the next three days. And it's just a soupy air mass across the deep south and a good chunk of the southeast with those fog advisories this morning. But let's take a look at the latest impacts because we do have an expanded moderate risk impacts. We're talking hazardous driving conditions, extreme caution. Uh, closures and disruptions to infrastructure may occur. So we're talking all the way portions of North Texas, West Texas, including the Austin area and even San Antonio and a good part of Arkansas and portions of uh, Oklahoma here and even portions of Western Tennessee. Those are the areas that are inundated with this ice storm over the next three days, I think Tuesday, Wednesday, and it does include portions of Thursday. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. It's also important to hit the like button as well. It definitely helps out more than you know. And I started a second channel, Pal Ponder Ultra. I actually uploaded my first video yesterday, so you can go on that channel and check it out. It's gonna be really designed for short range weather analysis and a lot of educational content. So it's a Pal Ponder Ultra, so definitely check out my second channel and I'll be uploading another video soon. So let's talk about today's winter because yesterday we did a drawing on yesterday's uh, you know video on a Tempest weather flow weather station and the random word was ice and I did a random random drawing and the winner is Christopher Byman so Christopher Byman is the winner of the Tempest weather flow weather station uh, please reach out to me I need your address and your phone number and I'll ship it out to you so you can get that right away trust me you'll love it I've had it myself for about three years so Let's take a look at the setup going forward. So here's the temperatures, and that's going to be crucial. This is the latest NAM. This is the model that actually hit this pretty accurately, and really none of them did. Technically, they were all behind. That's typically what happens with Arctic air masses. They're dense, and they're shallow, and they sink further and faster than expected. And this is exactly what happened with this Arctic air mass. You can still, there's a lot of Arctic air still in place in a good chunk of Saskatchewan and De Manitoba, all the way into uh, portions of Ontario, into Quebec, really dangerously cold temperatures, widespread 20 and 30 below zero. You can see this sharp gradient of widespread teens in Oklahoma and Texas, well into the 20s, dipping all the way down into central Texas with that freeze, freeze and continue to remain below freezing, I think for several days to come. Look at the sharp gradient with that southeast ridge of that battle zone that we talked about that was going to unfold with this particular setup and create the ice storm. And it's all culprit of this mechanism down here, this verticity down here in Southern California. That's bringing all the rain showers across Los Angeles and around the San, Di uh, San Diego area. It's even bringing some rains into the desert Southwest portions of like Yuma, Arizona. That's pretty rare guys, but it's also rare to have Arctic air in place with a mechanism down here in California. And that's gonna take its sweet time to make it across uh, portions of New Mexico and Texas and as it does it's going to load a lot of ice in its wake because this is Thursday it really doesn't go anywhere right it doesn't make that far of a trek so this is a long duration prolonged event with sleet freezing rain even thunder sleet numerous reports across the Dallas Warworth area yesterday reported 
thunder sleet thunder freezing rain oklahoma central texas this is a rare event and plenty of more of that is on the table with this system so let's break down the details for you we're talking about a significant ice storm from across the southern plains and across the mid mid south here we've got several more rounds of freezing rain and mixed with sleet at times between now and really wednesday night could extend into thursday morning but look at the expansion of the winter storm warning and does include all the way down to san antonio even winter weather advisories even further than that i mean this is a good chunk into midland lubbock is under that winter weather advisory oklahoma city is under that winter weather advisory i mean this is continuing to to expand with every step of the way as that shallow air mass that arctic air mass continues to win the battle zone and take over in the Southeast Ridge. And I talked about that. It was going to eventually win the war on this. And it definitely has. And there's um, ice storm warnings across Little Rock all the way into getting into Nashville, Bowling Green areas. These encompasses a huge area across the Southern Plains and the Deep South. So, yes, we're talking a lot of ice accumulations and this gets dangerous i think it really starts to intensify today and especially tomorrow we're talking about accumulating ice on roadways especially all the bridges and open passes talking about treacherous travel and where i'm really concerned is tuesday night heading into wednesday we're talking a prolonged potential power outages and a lot of tree damage as that ice gets continued to be coated on all the surfaces and starts weighing down those trees, starts weighing down those power lines. And I think that's when things start really getting nasty on the power outages, unfortunately. So definitely a bumpy ride over the next couple of days for sure. So let's break down the details for you. There's this trigger mechanism for today. So it's across the desert southwest. Pretty rare to be raining down there in the Yuma, Arizona area. But that's the culprit. That's the mechanism that's causing all the lift with the Arctic air in place, causing that overrunning setup. Look where the Arctic air mass has plunged all the way down into Brownsville now. And before that, we're talking widespread freezing rain. That's why they've got the winter storm warnings in place all the way extending into West Virginia. We do have a little bit of a clipper system up there into portions of Toronto's bringing some sh snow snap, sh you know, snow showers for them and some, you know, lake enhanced effect snow. <laughs> Buffalo is getting more snow. They've had, I can't even keep up, 160 inches or something like that. It's been some crazy snow up there in Buffalo. <laughs> Record year for sure. So let's talk about the temperatures going into Wednesday because really don't go anywhere guys they really don't go anywhere the arctic air continues to remain locked and loaded a good chunk of the same areas so the same areas we're talking extended period of time i'm thinking dallas they actually dropped below freezing sunday night at seven o'clock and this is all day wednesday now so this is the prolonged duration event of many areas being below freezing for an extended period of time there is where the winter battle zone is, right? It doesn't really sink any further south than that. That's why you're in that soupy air mass across the deep south and portions of the southeast with those fog advisories. And just to the north of there in the cold sector, that's where you're susceptible to get that freezing rain and that sleet. And that just unfolds and extends further south. And we start to see the plunge in that Arctic air mass extending a little bit further south as another heavier wave that will be coming across and moving across with complements of that trough digging in really expands the freezing freezing rain i think this is a, the, probably going to be turning out to be the most intense day now heading into wednesday for a good chunk of the southern plains into the southeast like i mentioned complements of that little clipper system up there and toronto and uh, montreal will add to those snow totals but notice the west coast you're still dry at least for the moment but I do feel rain is going to be on the way as we get deeper into the weekend. So a look at the temperatures. By Thursday, we finally start to see the Arctic air start to modify. So we start to see the plunge all the way down to Mexico. The Arctic air tries to slowly, huh, it's going to be slowly, guys, slowly start to retreat uh, further, further north as we get deeper into the day. So I think you're freezing in the morning time frame, and that's why they've expired the winter storm warnings by then. 
but you're still going to have a lot of ice to deal with and another chilly rain coming across a good chunk of the south with the last culprit you see the plunge to mexico right there's the plunge we've been waiting for this we talked about it's got a one-way ticket to mexico and that's exactly what's unfolding here and that's the stage and say hey we got rebound on the way it's going to be a slow rebound once we had that plunge we then we finally get the rebound on the way but we still got heavier rains to deal with across the deep south and still pockets of freezing rain as that arctic air tries to retreat a little bit further north but i think you just refreeze again in a good chunk of these areas into friday morning but notice the west right notice the west we've got more rain entering the picture for the northwest areas into uh, northern portions of california they're going to start getting wet again as the intensity of that clipper system and then all the cold kind of gets bottled up so there's the plunge as we get into thursday there's the plunge to mexico plunging that arctic air all the way down to the deep south and then tr and tries to moderate after that but what happens between now and then is just a glaze of sleet this is a, a coating, a good coating of sleet across a good chunk of North Texas, West Texas, and even into Central Texas, portions of Oklahoma, these areas that are under that winter storm warning and advisories all the way across into Arkansas, Western Tennessee, through Kentucky, a lighter amounts as you extend into West Virginia, and then even lighter than that once you go up into portions of Maryland. But look where the blend is, guys. That is concerning to this huge swath of ice. This is freezing rain across a good part of North Central and West Texas, Oklahoma and Arkansas and portions of Northern portions of Mississippi and Western uh, you know, Tennessee going, going into Kentucky. And here's the latest update on the European guidance. It's your, the European, hit, you know, it, they don't really get, they don't get a good grasp on the shallow, shallow Arctic air mass. And that's why these systems have really been predominantly Northwest. But once, once it sees it right now that it's here, then yes, there it really pushes the Arctic air mass and pushes those elevated ice accumulations further, further South. So yeah, pretty worrisome to see the latest Euro update on some of these potential ice accumulations of more than a half inch. And this, I think, where we start getting dangerous scenarios of those prolonged power outages potentially as it starts weighing down on all the trees and all the power lines out there. And I think we're gonna be start seeing numerous power outages, unfortunately, start to unfold as we go into Tuesday night and a Wednesday with this particular system as uh, these pockets of spokes of energy come across so but for now look at the power outages we're good we're good right now but i think things definitely turn turn for the worse as we get deeper into tonight especially into tomorrow but going into the saturday there's the plunge and the arctic air tries to retreat but as it retreats if it gets got one last gas like you know the the polar lobe has got to go somewhere and with this heat trying to build back in over Alaska and cross British Columbia and across the northern states, it pushes, it really compresses the colder air mass. And I think we get a plunge up in the, into the northeast and some of these areas could actually get record low temperatures and daily break their daily record low temperatures as some of these areas are 25, 30, 35 degrees below average temperatures and well below average in a good chunk of new england and across the northeast so expect some very very even frigid you know temperatures uh you know boston could hit 10 below zero and in, in some of these spots just to kind of give you an idea so definitely very cold weather on the way so here's the next five days you know on the rainfall front on the at least the precipitation front i think most of this does not start until friday you know thursday friday heading into uh you know this weekend so we got a good swath of more rain coming back and that 22 day deluge of those nine successful atmospheric river events left a good left a big dent in the drought and we've had a little bit of dryness but we got more rain potentially heading back into portions of northern california 
But there's all the precipitation across much, much of the south there and that demarcation line where that storm is going to be. And to the north, you're just kind of high and dry uh, at the moment. But what happens beyond that is there's the Arctic air. It slowly starts to retreat. We start to see the ridge start building in more of a kind of a zonal flow pattern will kind of take shape. The Arctic air will lift back up into Canada, back into Greenland, back into Alaska again. So the, the colder air masses lift to the north, but then the next system we got to keep our eye on as the jet stream will start to buckle again. This won't be until maybe the sixth, seventh time frame of, of February. We'll start to see a little bit of a buckle, a kink in the hose of the jet stream across the good portions of the, you know, the central central U.S. here, portions maybe Kansas, maybe these areas right here looking for our next potential snowstorm trying to unfold as we get into that time frame towards the 6th, 7th, 8th time frame. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button. Catch me on Facebook, Instagram, and as well as Twitter. I'll be updating on those platforms as well. And catch me the next update, Wire Protect You, before and after the storm.